Oh, I wish I was in New Orleans. I can see it in my dreams. Arm in arm down Burgundy. New Orleans, I'll be there. Um, I actually wasn't supposed to be here today. I don't know if you know that, but uh, it's true. They got the wrong guy absolutely to do this. I was a musician for a long time, and I toured all over the world. Uh, the longest tour that I did ran for six straight years. It was 150 dates a year. I lived in my van for six years. Just by show of hands, how many of you here have lived in your vehicle for six years? <laughs> It's a party trick I like to do because I'm always the only one in the room that has had that experience. So uh, that's pretty cool, right? Um, but I was my own uh, booking agent. I was my own publicist. I had a booking agent in Europe, but uh, I was my own record company. In the days of Napster, in the days of um, free music, I gave away more than 50,000 albums uh, all over the world, uh, which is maybe I really suck at making money. I don't know. but. Um, you know, it was it, it was uh, it was a long slog, and I was literally on the job 24/7 for, as I say, six years at one point. And um, you become your job when there's no other place to go. And my identity got wrapped up in that in a in a serious way. Um, I think it was hard for a lot of my family members to understand what I was doing. You know, he's left home. Why isn't he interested in the family business? You know, he's a jerk. He's sitting on his ass. I was sitting on my ass a lot in the car, okay? Um, and you can ask if I have, you know, a chip on my shoulder about this. And yeah, I have a, I have a family-sized fucking bag of chips on my shoulder about all of this. Um, but, you know, the thing is, is that uh, when you have a father, you know, who of course, I loved, and I mean, that doesn't even that doesn't even do it justice. But a father who's a really big tree, right? He was a global manufacturer of flat glass. In fact, he was the world's largest glass producer, and he owned these sports teams. The only person in the history of the world that had three sports teams that all won major league championships in the same year. So it's a big tree, and when you grow up beneath a big tree. Well, nothing grows in the shade of a big tree. So you have to leave home. And you have to individuate from your parents. So I left, and I was doing this music thing. And at some point, he called, and he said, uh, will you come back to work for me? I said, no, of course not. And he said, well, this time it's a family philanthropy. So I said, well, let me finish my contracts, and I'll move back to Detroit um, you know, as soon as, as soon as I'm through with that. The problem for me was, after that, um, that, as I said before, since my identity was so wrapped up in music, to stop doing that was like a real breakdown for me. I couldn't breathe anymore. I couldn't walk up the stairs. I developed actually really paralyzing stage fright as a result of not performing. And uh, so it was a serious adjustment for me to, um, to sort of figure out what my life would be now, being involved in this philanthropy. What I think um, I'm able to do now hopefully, which I think is important for, for all philanthropists, is not to let my identity get wrapped up so much in the work. It's the same kind of thing where I feel like I'm on the job all the time. Um, but I have to be aware to keep that, you know, I'm not the work, and the place has my father's name on it. It's his philanthropy, and I'm the, I'm the guardian of that. So I don't know where this all ends. I don't know what the message is. They said, you know, um, uh, Actually, they gave me some, some courage and some space here because they said in the coaching, if you don't know the answer, if you don't know where the conclusion is, that's fine. So we have to make a promise to I'll come back in 10 or 20 years and I'll tell you what the end of this is. 